Here. Courtney? Here. Commissioner Vargas? Here. Commissioner Lightfoot? Here. Commissioner Labonte? Here. Commissioner Rudine? Here. Commissioner Wilkerson? Present. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, uh, uh, Tillotson. Um, everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll ask the Vice Chair uh, to please call uh, to the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, Vice Chair Courtney. Thank you, sir. At this time, I will ask staff if there are any communications or announcements uh, for this evening's meeting. Thank you, Chair Klein. We have one communication for item 7B from Mr. Avakian, and that was published with the online packet and will be addressed under 7B. And that's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Manager Morris. Um, uh, next item is approval of the agenda. If there are no changes, do I have a motion and then a second to approve the agenda? Yeah, is there a second? Uh, will the clerk please uh, call the vote? Commissioner Vargas? Yes. Commissioner Lightfoot? Yes. Commissioner Labonte? Yes. Commissioner Rudine? Yes. Commissioner Wilkerson? Yes. Vice Chair Fortney? Yes. Chair Klein? Yes. Passed. Thank you, Clerk uh, Tillotson. Uh, next item is business from the floor. This portion of the agenda is available for the public to address the Planning Commission on any issue that is not on the agenda. Uh, there will be a limit of three minutes per speaker. At this time, I welcome anyone who wishes to address the Commission regarding a topic uh, or issue that is not on the agenda for the evening. Uh, if you can please approach the podium. So we'll now go ahead and close public comment. Um, we'll move to item six, and that's the consent calendar. Um, now is the time um, where we have one item for the consent calendar. We have one item on consent, uh, which are the minutes from the November 1st meeting. Uh, does anyone from the commission or the public wish to pull uh, the consent item for discussion? Uh, okay, um, do I have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar? Moved by Commissioner Rudin. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wilkerson. Uh, will the <clears throat> we um, Clerk Tilton please call the roll? Commissioner Vargas. Commissioner Lightfoot. Yeah. Commissioner Labonte. Yeah. Commissioner Rudin. Commissioner Wilkerson. Yeah. Vice Chair Fortney. Yeah. Chair Klein. Yes. Pass. Thank you, uh, Clerk Tilton. Uh, we are now at the public hearing portion of the agenda. Uh, our first item will be the Trans Western Project. Uh, we will first hear a presentation by staff, followed by commissioner questions, and then we will open it up for public comment. Uh, the presentation for this item will be presented by planning manager Paimon Bivan. Uh, may we please have staff's presentation, Mr. Bivan. Good evening. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Planning Commission, the item for you tonight is the Trans Western Ventures Life Science and GMP Manufacturing Campus. Uh, the request is to construct an approximately 22 acre, uh, develop a 22 acre site with life science uh, and manufacturing campus in the southern part of uh, the Vaca Valley Business Park. Uh, the two items being requested tonight are a modified initial study to comply with CEQA and a design review to address the building design and site design. Uh, so a quick summary of the project, it's roughly um, 22 acres of uh, vacant land right now. Uh, the proposal is to um, have a, a campus that consists of manufacturing, office, laboratory, uh, warehouse, and shipping support services. There are two phases of the project. Phase one uh, consists of two buildings uh, totaling uh, roughly 200,000 square feet, uh, 561 surface parking spaces, landscaping, and other site improvements. Uh, phase two would bring an additional building, roughly 20, uh, 122,000 square feet, and would also include a parking garage for uh, approximately 730 spaces and 145 surface spaces left over from uh, phase one, and also additional landscaping and uh, site improvements. Uh, the primary access to the site would be off of uh, Horse Creek Drive. 
So this showed an existing aerial with the um, with the plan, with the sort of build out plan uh, overlaid on on the site right now. Uh, there's really two portions to the site. The southern portion uh, is bisected by the uh, South Horse Creek, uh, uh, South Horse Creek, uh, and there's really no development other than landscaping to comply with the city's um, gateways design master plan being proposed. Uh, so the bulk of the development is going to be on the northern portion of the site where you see the three buildings and the parking garage. This is a rendering of what you'd see um, at the entrance of the site from Horse Creek Drive. Um, looking at the two site plans, so this site plans for phase one, as we mentioned, two buildings, um, various site improvements, and uh, about 561 surface parking spaces. This would be phase two, that includes building three, and a parking garage on top of what was uh, what would be the previous uh, phase one surface parking. There would still be about 145 uh, surface, surface parking spaces in addition to the 730 uh, parking garage spaces. Uh, the site includes, as part of phase one, uh, and additional amenities as part of phase two, outdoor dining, uh, pedestrian furniture, pedestrian uh, walking trails, uh, sports fields, and just a lot of amenities that um, they'd expect to see in sort of today's uh, campuses uh, for biotech strategy, uh, biotech uses. Um, this shows um, uh, sort of the rendering of the site plan uh, with landscaping, as we mentioned, as the applicant proposed and as we condition, the site is well landscaped and well designed. Um, this, this, the applicant is sort of um, looking at two ways of complying with, uh, with landscaping. One, what the code requires, but also what the city's design gateways uh, requires, which is typically the perimeter landscaping with um, uh, certain types of shrubs and, and trees. So um, I think there are a couple of spots that we feel probably need to have a couple more trees or shrubs, and those were in the conditions of approval um, before you. Uh, this is the proposed building design. So all three buildings would have the same design. Um, and this is something that, again, there wasn't a lot of work uh, from staff side. I think the first proposal that the applicant had was, was pretty good. We just worked with them to break up sort of the larger wall planes um, so that it wouldn't seem like a, or a, a bland uh, elevation. So the outcome was able to add some um, features to that too, to, to avoid that look and improve that, that elevation. In terms of the environmental assessment, uh, to comply with CEQA, we um, hired a consultant to prepare a modified initial study. Modified initial studies essentially are for projects that um, are the same type of land use and development that the general plan EIR had anticipated. In this case, in 2015, when the general plan was updated, um, nothing really changed our business parks. The anticipation was those would remain business park uh, with these types of uses, uh, certainly ones that would accommodate biotech uh, users. So to do that, though, uh, there are technical studies that need to be prepared to really confirm that there are no new impacts. And so we went through that process with our consultant and um, the, the MIS, the modified initial say, did confirm that the project does not create any impacts that were not um, foreseen in the previous EIR. And those are typically uh, would, would consist of pre-construction surveys for owls or, or raptors. Uh, there aren't any or unique um, impacts that, again, were not anticipated in the general plan EIR. So we're, uh, we're able to, uh, to go with a modified initial study as CEQA allows uh, us to do. Um, so really the importance of this project as it relates to the city's biotechnology and advanced manufacturing initiative, this is the first project uh, since that uh, initiative was adopted by the city council in 2019. Um, uh, right now, beyond uh, Transwestern, there are some other uh, vacant properties to the north that have been purchased, I believe. Uh, there are no tenants, obviously, and no applications in front of us, but uh, the, the goal is to uh, bring in additional bio, uh, biomanufacturing uh, users. So uh, really, again, the, the, the goal of the initiative is to certainly grow the city's tax base, uh, create jobs, and strengthen local and regional economy. Um, in, in that regard, projects like Transwestern um, being the first one uh, after this initiative, and really in an area uh, such as the Vac Valley Business Park that has existing campuses, you know, Kaiser, Genentech, Father's House, um, State Compensation, it is a good fit. And, um, we're hopeful that this would be the first one that would attract other uh, biotechnology users to VAC. we pretty confident in that. Um, although there aren't any um, specific tenants right now, um, these are just shell buildings, but we anticipate 
um, that there will be a lot of interest in, in this side and of course, hopefully in the other sites in, in the park as well. Um, so uh, with that, our conclusion, um, as we mentioned, the staff board to support the project and meets the required findings, um, no new environmental impacts that weren't anticipated with the general plan EIR, complies with general plan policies, complies with lands development code, uh, the project combines well-designed campus amenities and high-quality site design, and it's certainly a desired use that was contemplated when the council adopted initiative for a biomanufacturing uh, initiative. So with that, um, our recommendation is that the Planning Commission approve the modified initial study and approve the design review for the Transwestern Ventures Life Science and GMP Manufacturing Campus, subject to the conditions of approval of the staff. Um, that concludes my presentation. Um, we have a representative from Transwestern who would like to say a few words about sort of what their vision is, uh, high level, or what their vision is for the site. So um, when there's an opportunity, I think they'd like to speak to that. Thank you. Thank you for that excellent presentation, uh, Mr. Devon. Um, terrific. Um, we'll now open up to Commissioner questions, and then we'll receive public comment. Do a quick scan of Commissioner questions. Okay. And I would invite the applicant to uh, join us for public comment. Um, he, uh, he or she, they're welcome to speak before or after, whenever they're um, they're ready. Um, please. Sorry about that. Uh, is this? Hi, I'm, I'm Ken Myersick with Trans Western Ventures. I'm here to represent Trans Western Ventures, and and first of all, I want to um, congratulate the the count, the, the planning commission, and the council for for creating this specific plan because I believe. We believe, and this is why we're here, exactly what needs to happen in Solano County and specifically Vacville, because um, these these buildings will bring employers that are going to bring great jobs, really good, well-paying jobs um, to the market. And um, I also want to especially thank Don. Don was my first interaction uh, with the city, and he's made it nothing but a, a pleasant experience. Um, with in payments involvement um, in the planning process. We have our whole team is here. Um, so if there are any specific questions, I'm not the person to answer those. Uh, we've got the team, but we've got, uh, we, we, we did a lot of research with, um, we wanted to make sure we were building something that was right for the park or the specific plan. And, um, you know, our intent is, we don't know what the answer is going to be, because there are so many things that are going on in the life science space right now. Um, but the market told us that manufacturing is where we want to be. It fits the plan. Um, and the design of the buildings are intended intentionally to look like science buildings, not uh, warehouses. Um, and, and that's with the landscaping. And so we want a campus environment. We've, we've engaged Polaris and we've engaged the Genus and we want to make sure there's consistency with what they're doing and what we're doing. So um, it's been an absolutely pleasant experience for us as a, as a partner with you or with the city. Um, so I wanna just say thank you on behalf of Transwestern and um, I'm gonna leave it at that. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer, but if they're specific, I'm gonna to defer to the team. One more time, quick catch your uh, first and last name. Ken Meyersick, M-E-Y, -Y yeah, Meyersick. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Thank you. Um, you're uh, welcome. I'm gonna invite the public to speak. Um, and uh, we'll, you, you have uh, time after that, if you wish. Um, Commissioner Wilkerson, I see. <laughs> sure. Uh, Under amenities, hey, man, you said sports fields. Can you quickly go into just a, uh, so I believe you said soccer and what, any others? I mean, excuse me, that's um, what they've identified on site plan. Obviously that could change once there are specific tenants that would like certain facilities for their employees but there's definitely room around the campus for a number of um, sports fields. So it could be soccer, it could be basketball, it could be tennis, it could be a number of things, depending on what the demand is from the particular tenants. So I've seen campuses like this before in Sacramento and they have all different ranges, but the public's also able to use it. Do you think that'd be something we'd be able to do here in Rackville? I don't know. Um, I. <laughs> I'm just not putting it on the spot. I just know, cause I mean, no, I, 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 yeah. or anything like that. I mean, if you've got an open field, and someone wants to go play, are we going to tell them that? I, I would certainly hope so, but I haven't had that conversation with Got the it. applicant. And again, part of this is um, Transwestern is constructing the shell buildings and yes, really building the site for a tenant. So um, I, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I hope, but, um, but I don't know for sure. Got it. Thank you. 
we'll have that question for your team, uh, Mr. Marisic. Um, but with that, I, um, <clears throat> Commissioner Wilkerson, uh, are you, are you, okay, we're good. Um, I would like to open public comment uh, at this time to invite the public to line up behind the podium. We'll be providing three minutes per speaker and um, public comment is uh, open for anyone who wishes to address the commission on this project. I just ask if you give your first and last name so we know who. Um, By all means, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, my name is Roberto Valdez. I'm a long time Macaville resident. I've been here before, so I think you probably recognize me, like I recognize you all. Anyway, um, I'm here because, uh, and let me just say that I'm still, even though I'm still trying to familiarize my, myself with this project, um, and I appreciate Mr. Uh, 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 Payment uh, Beham, who was very helpful yesterday in kind of clarifying a few points. Uh, thank you again. Uh, anyway, um, my concern is pretty, pretty basic right now at this point, but I will look more thoroughly at this project. Um, and I have several reasons for that. Number one, why do we need another biotech building for that matter? Or I, I'm assuming, the, we, as you all know, we still have Genentech. And, um, you know, so that's my question. And I think uh, that warrants an explanation. Um, maybe, uh, and by the way, I couldn't hear you very well because your mic system is not, uh, it's not coming through very well from the audience point of view, and I don't have my hearing aids. So I might have missed uh, a few pointers earlier. Apologize for that. But anyway, just a form of clarification. But uh, the other thing I want to say to you, I certainly recommend that you all be transparent, uh, again, as to why we need this, uh, uh, another biotech company here. You know, I recognize that uh, uh, it's important that we pursue those forms of knowledge, but it's, you know, for the basic sake of the community. But, uh, but you know, I still don't, uh, I'm just suggesting that you be transparent of that. Okay. The other third thing I have uh, a concern is that uh, um, I'm trying to think uh, off my top of my head right now. Uh, of course, uh, I'm here also because, uh, as you know, I take a very strong view of the environmental uh, situation here and where we're going in Vacaville. This is not the first or it won't be the last project I come to speak to you about that. But um, uh, so um, I'm aware of, uh, in the past from the nut tree project when you were was the nut tree project was being modified, uh, that there was a lot of uh, um, some species there that have been pretty much wiped out, I think, with the removal of some of the trees and oak trees and you, even eucalyptus trees. You'd be surprised how valuable they can be, you know. And I see your light there, and I apologize. But the last thing I want to say, and I want, I'm being brief with you. Um, um, the, I think uh, by all means, you should all think about the impact the long, not only the short, but the long time impact. I recognize it's for jobs and that's important too, but it's not just jobs that we're talking here. We're talking about what we're losing there when you're building this in wetland areas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That comment. Um, I, I'd like to invite uh, other members of the public that would like to address uh, the commission on this project. Um, to summarize what we heard, uh, there are some issues in transparency that uh, that 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 came up um, from the speaker. Um, if we could speak a little louder as well, um, I got you there, sir. Um, we'll project. Um, but if um, Paymon, if you don't mind covering um, just uh, at this time before we close public comment if there's anything that you'd like to respond to the comment that we just heard. Um, regarding why uh, the city is pursuing biotech, I would certainly invite the city's economic development director who's been heavily involved in that with the city council. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a city council initiative that was approved um, with overwhelming support by the council. Um, but in terms of the, the details of, of that, I would definitely invite our uh, economic development director. Um, I. In terms of the environment, um, we've complied with CEQA. Um, 
this is a site that's been disturbed over the years. So it's not um, one that has a lot of trees with a lot of species, but regardless, we are um, required to do, the applicant is required to do pre-construction surveys. Um, that's part of their approval. It's part of the mitigation measures that they're subject to. Um, so I think those are the only two items. I, I would ask, if you don't mind speaking up, a, projecting a little louder, Paymon, and just one question to specifically the environmental um, question that would stand out to me that was raised. Is, is there anything to, uh, um, uh, is, what's the difference between the study that we did and, and just in an, an initial study, right? Because are, are, isn't it typically like an initial study that you do that kicks off your analysis, and I see we have a modified initial study. I, I don't think I'm as familiar with this in um, So I'll speak to the MIS very briefly. We have our consultant here as well sure. to sort of do a better job than me in explaining that. A modified initial study basically, again, is CEQA allows, pro CEQA really is interested in protecting the environment, but also allowing efficiencies and streamlining where it's applicable. That's why we have um, uh, infill development exemptions and statutory exemptions and categorical exemptions. So um, this is a case where uh, CEQA has said, look, if a piece of land has been zoned and is consistent with the general plan, the use was identified and anticipated in the general plan, and there was an EIR that was done, then you don't need to go and do a new environmental analysis as long as you're not creating any new impacts. To confirm that, we have to uh, do some technical studies to confirm that, in fact, there are no new impacts. That's what we did. We prepared those studies. Our consultant did prepare those studies. And the determination is that there are no new impacts because it's zoned for the type of development and it was anticipated, it was anticipated in the general plan EIR. So nothing has changed either with the general plan, with the zoning, or with the project that would create new issues that were not anticipated. So in a nutshell, that's MIS. I'd be happy to have Stantec provide um, a more detailed explanation if you like. And I, I wanna invite uh, Mr. Burris to come and just speak to the economics of the project if he's so inclined, but um, while he's making his way down here, I would just um, wanna Specify so a modified environmental or so a modified impact study initial is study. the same. Initial study is the same as a. Well, initial study is required for all projects to comply with CEQA. Okay. Right. Um, again, the mod the modified initial study is really um, taking a step forward because a lot of that work's already been done with the, sorry, <laughs> with the EIR that was prepared for the general plan. But uh, again, I, I, I would definitely um, urge the, the, the chair to have a longer explanation by Stantec. Absolutely. I, I just want to make sure we're, we're, sure. we're uh, hearing the public's um, concerns. Yeah. Um, Mr. Burris. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> uh, sorry for the hobbling down. Just a uh, piece of advice. Don't put together a home gym with a seven-year-old. <laughs> Um, uh, to answer the gentleman's question, um, uh, generally speaking, what we do in, uh, in the field of economic development is we always try to determine what grows uh, our city's economy, what drives our economy. Uh, so we did a lot of like work in around 2017 and 2018 to actually determine what that is. Um, I think we all know visibly we can see that we have a lot of retail, so retail was not one of the areas that we investigated. But once we started working with a few of the nation's top site selectors and economists, it became really clear that biotechnology and advanced manufacturing really were driving our economy and were some of the higher paying jobs. Um, once we made that determination, working with the city manager, we thought, well, maybe we should put together a strategy. How can we capitalize on that information? Knowing that we also have a small cluster of biomanufacturers, it made, made perfect sense uh, for us to pr pr prepare a strategy around growing that cluster. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, it took us about a year and a half to get the strategy together. We launched in 2020 with the assistance of um, Congressman John Garamendi. And shortly after, we had some great successes with uh, Agenis Biotech coming on board, purchasing property to build their facility. Shortly after that, our local company, Polaris Pharmaceuticals, also purchased land to expand their operations. And then shortly after that, we had the pleasure of meeting Transwestern Ventures. And as you know now, they purchased property in our building a facility as well. Um, we're hoping that uh, in mid-January, uh, we'll come back with another announcement. Thank you. Man, busy, busy guy. How do you have to put together a gem? 
<laughs> I need to put together the gym to keep my energy up. So <laughs> clearly, that's why your seven year old is uh, running the house at the gym. Right. And I hope that answers the question for the gentleman, but happy to talk with you more if you'd like. Thank you, Don. Commissioners? Uh, any of the commissioners have anything to. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. With that, we're going to go ahead and close. Is there, before I close public comment, are there any other members of the public that would like to address the commission? Um, okay, so with that, we're going to close public comment. We're going to bring it back uh, for deliberation um, to uh, uh, deliberate as a commission here. Uh, but first, I'd like to entertain a motion and a second, and then we can just uh, go into discussion. Uh, I see Commissioner Rudine. Um. Okay, well, I didn't have any questions or anything. I just had some comments that I wanted to say. And uh, what I was hoping we could do, it's okay. okay. I'll make a motion to. You can bring up the motion. How do I read it? <clears throat> I always get these wrong. It is bad. Um, okay, I would like to make a motion to approve the modified initial study and approve the design review for the Trans Western Ventures Life Science and GMP Manufacturing Campus, subject to the conditions of approval. Second. Is there a second? Uh, seconded by Commissioner Wilkerson, uh, moved by Commissioner Rudine. Um, we will now go into Commissioner Palmer. Um, Commissioner Rudine. I just wanted to say that I was actually very excited when I was reading this packet. <coughs> I, um, I drove around the site twice, actually, the 8505 Back Valley Parkway, trying to picture this, and I think it's just going to look awesome. Um, I think the design elements will be perfect. and. I'm, I'm really, really excited. With reference to the uh, public speaker about habitat, I think with the amount of landscaping and the trees that are being added, it will create more habitat because uh, it's pretty barren there now. And the design that looks like a long horse creek might, you know, kind of it, I think it'll be more beneficial with the landscaping that will be there. So I think that might address any problems or, um, with any habitat that might be there. So, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Dean. Uh, Commissioner Wilkerson, would you like to speak? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Um, let's see, other commissioners that uh, are sure for name, anything? No, beautiful looking project. Welcome to Vacaville. Um, thank you for picking Vacaville. I hope the experience so far has been pleasurable. And it's been pleasurable enough that you look and talk to Don about vacant land that's still existing out there that you might want to put in escrow before you're done with this project. Thank you very much. This message from the Backville Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this man's a good second for artist. Um, anyone else? I do. It's an impressive project. I'm very exciting. I, 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 there was a question from Commissioner Wilkerson about the use of potential sports fields, whether that be for the public. I know we didn't talk about that, didn't address that. If we can, that would be phenomenal. If we cannot, not a deal breaker for me. Not tonight, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, thank you for the question. I think Payman addressed it. We, we actually don't know yet. Um, because we're building shells and the idea is we want to attract those users and the users are going to make that determination. In a perfect world, obviously, they'll be available to the, to the public and it's, an open, it's going to be an open project. It's not going to be fenced unless, you know, who knows, if somebody comes along and says, we want a project and we're going to put a fence around it and get approvals for that because it's going to be high security, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. But the idea is that this is, this is an inviting project. It's part of Vaca Valley Business Park. And it's, it's why we engaged with the Genes and with Polaris because they're still figuring out their plan. So the idea is that this becomes, you know, a fully integrated part of the overall Vaca Valley Business Park. So. Thank you. Um, I um, want to second um, Vice Chair Fortney's comments. Um, welcome to Vacaville. We're so delighted that you've chosen our community. And I want to thank um, um, Don and his team and everyone who was responsible for the strategy. This is the, the absolute, um, the, 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 the council showed leadership in, in putting 
uh, Vacaville on this path. And um, the commission, um, I, 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 my, I, I would speak in support of this project, um, ought to um, follow the council's leadership on this uh, measure. Um, with that, we'll be, um, for, please call the roll, uh, the roll call vote. Commissioner Vargas. Yes. Commissioner Lightfoot. Commissioner Labonte. Commissioner Rudine. Commissioner Wilkerson. Yes. Vice Chair Fortney. Yes. Chair Klein. Yes. Sorry, if I could just take this opportunity to, to really thank everybody at the city um, who worked on this project. Uh, the council's initiative requires us to process these projects in 90 to 100 days, and today is the 90th day. So um, everybody at City Hall, Albert, uh, Development Engineering, Utilities, Traffic, Parks and Rec, um, I mean, they really put a lot of effort into this. So I just want to publicly acknowledge everybody's efforts in this. Planning has been working hard on this, um, and it's, it's not often that you, you see a, a whole city effort as we've seen. I think economic um, our economic team has been on fire. I mean, like hopefully we can keep these people in Vacaville um, because this is uh, really uh, what it's the right initiative, at the right time. So um, congratulations to everyone involved. Uh, with that, we'll move to seven B Payless Towing. Uh, we'll continue the public hearing with um, item seven B. Uh, we will. First, hear a presentation by staff, followed by commissioner questions, and then we will open it up for public comment. Uh, the presentation for this item will be presented by assistant planner Noah Rumbo Rumbawa. 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 Uh, may we please have staff's presentation? Thank you, Aaron. Good evening, Chair, members of the Planning Commission, and members of the public. Uh, tonight's item, or the item before you tonight, is the Payless Towing Project. The request before you tonight is a conditional use permit request to establish a vehicle towing and impound facility at 1319 Callan Street. Specifically, the request is for a categorical exemption from CEQA and for the aforementioned conditional use permit. On the right of the screen, you can see a map of the project location outlined in red is the lot where the towing and impound facility would be located. Uh, you can see Callan Street located uh, vertically on the screen and East Monta Vista Avenue horizontally on the screen. The project would be located on an approximately 7,800 square foot lot, 3,500 square feet of which would be used for vehicle storage. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And there are currently two employees that are proposed to be on site. Um, as originally proposed, the applicant was proposing two parking stalls uh, located along Callan Street. Access to the project site would come off of Callan Street. And as conditioned, the project does comply with all of the city standards. This slide shows an aerial view of the project site. As you can see, the applicant has installed um, a seven foot tall fence topped with barbed wire. There's a rolling gate along Callan Street. Um, and the site has been paved with concrete. That is the location where the vehicles will be stored. This aerial view also gives a good view of the surrounding land uses surrounding the site. Uh, to the north and to the south, we have a number of commercial service and automotive oriented businesses. And to the west or to the top of the screen here is the existing Paradise Cove manufactured home park. There's a chain link fence that separates the project site from the existing Paradise Cove manufactured home park. This slide shows uh, the original project plans as proposed by the applicant. During the review process, staff identified multiple items where the proposal did not meet city standards. And so staff and the applicant have been working together to address these issues, and we are confident that the project will comply with the code as conditioned. One of these issues was related to parking. As you can see in this plan, um, there are two parking stalls located um, along Callan Street within the required front yard setback. This did not meet the minimum parking standard outlined in the code, and it does not meet the required design standards as outlined in the code as well. And so staff is recommending condition number 4D and 4E, which require the applicant to relocate parking outside of the 15-foot front yard setback on Callan Street. 
and also to meet the minimum one parking space for every 1,000 square feet of uh, vehicle storage space um, as the minimum parking ratio. Uh, additionally, staff is also recommending condition number five in regards to landscaping. The applicant um, was, only provide, was only originally proposing to provide one street tree on Callan Street and no landscaping along the rear of the property adjacent to the manufactured home park. And this did not comply with the code um, due to the potential impacts of the proposed use and due to the conditional use permit, the code requires that the applicant plant a landscape setback buffer next to the manufactured home park. And so that is the intent of condition number five. Staff is also recommending condition 4A and 4B, uh, which help bring the project into compliance with fencing regulations as outlined in the code. Specifically, it would limit the fence height to six feet and would require the applicant to remove the barbed wire, which is explicitly prohibited in the city standards. It also requires the applicant to install a masonry wall abutting uh, Paradise Cove manufactured home park to again, help mitigate any potential impacts from the proposed use. Staff has discussed these conditions with the applicant and the applicant has accepted these conditions. And so to conclude, staff supports the project because it meets the required findings for a conditional use permit it complies with the general plan and zoning, and it complies with the city's development standards as conditioned. And so staff recommends that by simple motion, the planning commission approve the categorical exemption from CEQA and approve the conditional use permit for payless towing subject to the conditions of approval. And with that, staff would be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. And the applicant also, Mubashar Chowdhury, is also here as well to answer any questions about the project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramboa. Um, I'd like to, uh, if, if we can, the, we, um, <clears throat> the applicant is welcome to speak now. Um, we're gonna move into public comment now. Um, I'm gonna open that up. The applicant can speak now, or we, um, uh, it, it's really whatever, um, I, I'm leaving you, Mr. Ramboa, uh, the, the, I don't know who the applicant is, so you can let me know what they wanna do. We'd like to invite the applicant up okay. at this time to answer any questions. Sir, please. Um, my name is Mubashar Chaudhary. Thank you. I own another local small business family owned um, here in town. And this uh, lot was vacant or has been vacant for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. So we saw this opportunity. We purchased it about a year ago, moved in, started parking cars, got a violation. Long story short, we addressed those, started working with the city staff. And now we are hopefully in compliance and have agreed to you know all the conditions they wanted us to do and uh, start hopefully be able to start business in the next month or so. So, but um, pretty simple, nothing crazy like the last one, but um, we are here and uh, we're looking to expand our business. Thank you. Thank you for working with the city. And I, I um, you know, just for my own part, I'll, I'll say that uh, it, it's excellent to see people working with our staff and to get a positive feedback um, I know the process is not always easy, and um, you're, thank you very much for coming before us tonight and with our staff. And um, uh, if there are other members of the, of the public that would like to comment, um, at this time we would invite them to line up behind uh, the podium. On. I'm Steve Strem. Um, I'm the representative from the Paradise Cove Mobile Home Park. Um, the, the lot that you see in front of you was a concrete lot. Um, it was earlier a uh, just a vacant lot that was. Or thank you for. I, I, I support your business. I would like to see it succeed. One of the things that happened um, about a year ago, the concrete was poured there and it wasn't sloped to the Drain on the street. Um, so last year, about this time, uh, when it started raining, um, we had about a foot, foot and a half of water that went down. Our storm drains were over or filled. Um, the slope goes to the back, so we would love to have the slope going the other way. Um, also, cars were parked on there last, um, last, last about a year ago, and uh, they were they were towed in there. They were in wrecks. And there were oil and gas that was dripped down on that. So oil and gas was dripped over the home park. Um, and it would be nice to include, I heard there's a wall. It'd be nice to have some type of rail since vehicles, uh, since it sloped the mobile home park, 
if the brakes gave loose, then it would roll down the hill. So I'm just concerned now. All right. So um, I believe California drainage law requires the slope rain balance rather than park. So that's just my concern. Any other question? Hi, um, for Vergas. Children and families that live in that mobile park. The That's mass correct. Yeah. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and what, your, la your last name one more time, sir? <clears throat> Excuse me. S-T-R-E-M. Thank you, Mr. Stram. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. I can uh, address pretty, uh, pretty much all of those concerns, if that's okay. And then if you guys have questions, I can answer those as well. Uh, yes, a year ago, cars were parked. As I mentioned, um, we had started not knowing that we could or we could not do that. But um, we have since addressed those. You can see from here that there's no car spots, so no oil leaks or anything of that sort. Beyond that, we also have a survey from a professional surveyor showing that the slope of the land slopes towards the city, and I have a copy of that as well. So that's completely inaccurate what they just mentioned, but I did bring uh, engineers um, and with me as well. Uh, second, there's actually a drain looking at that building to my left that goes into the mobile home park. I have addressed that with the fire department and I have told them about that. The water's not coming from us, it's actually coming from this neighboring building. And thus we have a five foot setback from that gunshot building. So the water's not coming from us, the slope is already towards the street. Beyond that, we're already addressing this. How so? Because we will be putting a, an additional curb between the building so that if there is additional water, it will slope away towards the street, not going backwards. Safety-wise, towards the back, we're already proposing and agreed to the city's concern uh, about putting a masonry wall. Instead of going a standard masonry wall, we're going to go, be going with a larger block wall. So if you've seen down, um, <clears throat> if you go towards uh, Pleasance Valley from Gibson Canyon, there's a new block wall up. We'll be going with something similar to that, They're like two foot blocks. I mean, you could ram five cars or a truck in there. It's not going anywhere. Um, and uh, oil leaks, things like that. You know, like I said, there have not been any. We parked, we were able to use the lot for about three months. The cars were involved in accidents. There haven't been any leaks, but if there are ever leaks, then we do use um, either called eco pads. So you just put them under there and they absorb all that stuff. So, I mean, it's our property. We don't want, you know, I invest in the property. We plan to develop it later. I definitely don't want any negative soil conditions coming back. So I, I will be taking care of that, of course. Okay. Yes. Have you done a soil report? Uh, and we have not because we are not developing, but in the future, when we do plan to do it, we want to make sure that report doesn't come back with any concerns or things of that sort. So, yeah, I mean, literally the only reason I'm asking just brought it up, so I'm yeah. just curious. Um, I don't think we're required to do a soil report because we're not developing. That's, we're not the, that, that, that's what, I yeah. mean, to my knowledge, you're not required to do one, yeah. and so you brought up soil, so I was curious yeah. if you had done we, we don't see a concern because, um, you know, it's a non-porous lot, so everything drains towards the street regardless. You know, like I said, uh, already the slope is towards the street. We're less than 2%, and I think the minimum is supposed to be 13, so. I just want to make sure I'm being fair to yeah, the other commissioners sure. and anyone else who has questions for the applicant before we close public comment. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate, you. again, yep. you coming up. Um, were there other members of the public that wish to speak um, on um, the item before us? Okay, with that, we're going to go ahead and close public comment on item 7B and uh, uh, retain this matter. Um, for the commission for um, deliberation. Um, before we go into deliberation, I um, first request to see where the commission's at. If we're ready to do, I'll just entertain like a straw poll. We're ready to do a um, a motion and a second, and then discussion. I would entertain that now. Otherwise, we can um, go into deliberation. We live to the commission. Do I, do I have a motion? Thank you, Commissioner Reedy. Is there a second? Yeah, we'll second. Seconded by Vice Chair Fortney. Um, motion and second. Um, with that, we'll go into discussion. Commissioner Rudine. Yep. Um, 
As the maker of the motion, I um, would allow you to have the first comment. No, I'm good. There was a correspondence, and it sounds as though it's been addressed, and so I'm good. Thank you, Commissioner Rudine. Vice Chair Fortney, you seconded the motion. Anything to add? Only one question for staff, <clears throat> which I think it caught you. I didn't know barbed wire was not allowed on those business fences. So what is the alternative for a business? Um, is it wrought iron fencing? What, what is the option that is allowed? If you know. For a security fence. Right. I mean, if you don't, yeah. I'm assuming you know it on the top of your head, but yeah. The code outlines a variety of different materials that the applicant is able to use for fencing. Um, barbed wire is just one of many types of materials that are deemed dangerous materials and so thus are explicitly prohibited. Good enough. Thank you very much. Very good. Um, other members of the commission, I'm going to look to the left here, starting with Commissioner Vargas. No, I know we had the court. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner Vargas. Um, Mr. Lightfoot. I have no comment. Mr. Levante. Commissioner. Nothing. Okay. Um, the only person I have not asked for comment from is Commissioner Wilkerson. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Um, with that, I um, will ask um, the clerk to please call the vote. Commissioner Vargas. Yes. Commissioner Lightfoot. Yes. Commissioner Levante. Yes. Commissioner Rudine. Commissioner Wilkerson? Vice Chair Fortney? Yes. Chair Klein? Yes. Pass unanimously. The item passes unanimously. We'll move to item 7C. Thank you to the applicant and staff for your work. And I appreciate the public comment as well. Thank you very much. Um, as to item 7C, um, this is our final business item uh, tonight. Uh, this is the Centurion Classical school project. Uh, we will first hear a presentation by staff followed by a commissioner comments and then we will open it up to uh, public comment as their custom. Uh, starting with um, uh, planning technician Eileen Lee. And maybe please have the staff presentations report. Hi, good evening, Chair, members of the Planning Commission and public. Tonight before you, I have the Centurion Christian Classical School. The request includes to establish a private school with an existing building at the Orchard Avenue Baptist Church campus, which is located at 301 North Orchard Avenue. The planning entitlements um, include a request for a categorical exemption from CEQA, as well as a conditional use permit. Located on the right-hand side of the screen is the project site highlighted in red. Surrounding uses around the site include two schools to the northwest of the site is Hemlock Elementary School, and to the bottom of the screen off of North Orchard Avenue is Willis Jepson Middle School. The project summary includes a 2.33 acre site. The project is looking to utilize 1,600 square feet of existing space on the campus and would operate from Mondays to Fridays at 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and employ up to six employees. The maximum amount of students allowed for the project is 30 and existing on the site is 133 parking spaces. Access can be located off of North Orchard Avenue and this project does not include any changes to the exterior. As proposed, the project complies with the standards of the city as conditioned. Here is an aerial view of the church campus. Located in red is the school proposed school and to the right will is the existing play yard that the school would utilize. Located to the left of the screen is the existing church and also on the site in existing use is the daycare which is associated with the church. Here is an image of the floor plan. Centurion School would utilize four existing classrooms within the space with two larger classrooms and two smaller classrooms at the top. The original project included a proposal for up to 105 students. However, in reviewing the project with our traffic engineer from the Public Works Department, we have determined that an enrollment of 30 maximum students for a private school would not severely impact traffic. With this, as conditioned in condition number 12, 
the maximum occupancy for this project shall not exceed 30 students. And any modification to exceed 30 students shall require a resubmittal of the conditional use permit to determine if a further traffic study is needed. The original project proposal did not include any um, parking for bicycles. As required by the code, uses for public and semi-public uses shall require a minimum of two bicycle parking spaces. And with this, staff has conditioned that a minimum of two bicycle parking spaces shall be required for the project. And the applicant has accepted the conditions. To conclude, staff supports the project as it meets the required findings, complies with the general plan and zoning, and complies with the development standards of the city as conditioned. By simple motion, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission approves the categorical exemption from CEQA, as well as approve the conditional use permit for Centurion Christian Classical School, subject to the conditions of approval. I am more than happy to answer any questions. And the presentation is now done. And also our applicant, Jason Fout, is here to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee, for that. Um, I appreciate the clear um, instruction I need. You know. yeah. um, okay, so with that, um, we've uh, we've now come to public comment. I invite the applicant to, to, to speak now if, if they're interested in doing so. Otherwise, we'll um, you can do so after public comment. But yeah, please, I'll open public comment and invite the applicant to speak. It's just like this. I think this is my first time to stand in a chamber like this in my life. But so thank you for them. You've got great staff. And sir, could you? Uh, I didn't get your name. Oh, I'm Jason Fote. I'm the board treasurer for this project, Centurion School. Thank you. What I would like to though address is uh, my school is a tuition-free school. We don't charge tuition. Um, our teachers are self-funded, and we utilize churches and church spaces. The conditional approval here, and I talked to Eileen, seems like it can't be waived, but I'm going to ask anyways. There is a, a burdensome, we don't have money, right? We don't charge tuition. It's open to anybody. It's not like DCS at $12,000 per student. Families of the city who can't afford an alternative to public education can come to our school. But we don't have money for the fire department and the things they want to, to do to upgrade the, uh, the system there, the fire system, put in ventilation systems, things of that sort. So it's, I, I spent 30 years in the military. I mean, there's normally a waiver authority. <laughs> Is there a way to overcome the burdensome fire requirements, um, putting in sensors that turn off the... Uh, uh, ventilation systems. I mean, right now we could probably go over there to Orchard Baptist. There might be 50 or 75 kids doing Awanas over there right now. They're doing ministry all the time. And we just want to put some kids in there and do school. But now we have to upgrade when they're already utilizing those facilities for kids for the now, for the next 20, 25, 30, 40 years, however long. I mean, it just seems, I don't know if you're the waiver authority to say, hey, you don't need to do that because we're already kind of doing that through ministry and things of that sort. So that's my, my question. If it's not, I don't know if we'll be able to utilize the space. And I'll have to go I'm somewhere sorry else. To interrupt you. I, I, could you specify what, what waiver? The well, so then in this staff report, there's going to be a conditional use permit. Uh, so there's a condition to occupying the facility, correct? I just want to make sure because I interact with her. And so there's things in there that says the fire department says we have to have uh, Ventilation system, sensors put in the vents that say you turn off the vents. We have to have a, a, a Knox T handle. Um, bicycle racks, okay, we'll put two bicycle racks in. Um, but I understand, right? The current code is when you, when you build something, you have to have these upgraded systems, or if you're occupying these, these facilities, you have to put in new systems that are up to date. This building was built in 2000, not that long ago, but the fire code has changed and we don't have that stuff installed in, in the church facilities. So now we have to spend a lot of money to upgrade the fire system. 
And, and that's a condition for us to occupy, to put 30 kids in the, in the church. That's already there. Maybe with 75 kids in it right now, doing legal ministry. That's all. I don't know who can waive this requirement, um, but I ask if you can, because we don't have the money. That's all. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, just because I know the commission's wondering the same thing. So, yeah. I'm just going to ask. So, you'll have to specify for us what um, you're asking us to waive. So, if you go Specifically to. Specifically, and, and within the pages, if you'll indulge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Let me go to this one right here. So, exhibit B. All right. And then underneath the fire department there, item 16, a Knox key box. Here it's uh, page 131 in your planning commission packet. Okay. Sorry. And you're looking at um, beginning with condition number 13, and the Knox key box is condition number 16. Is there any way to pull that up on the screen so the public can see what we're referring to? I just want the public to be able to see what we're talking okay. about. Yeah. You have to give us a minute changes. to figure out whether or not we have Absolutely. that capability. Yeah. Take your time. And just so that we're multitasking, I, I see Commissioner Rudine. I have a question for the applicant. Yeah, have you priced these out? Have you priced out the Knox boxes? I would imagine the sensors are probably expensive. But have you priced any? Just any but out. No, okay. I have not. Um, it was only speaking with Jared Austin when he took an existing building in. And uh, he had to bring up some ADA compliance, but uh, an existing building on Alamo where Kairos is, mm -hmm. uh, he spent over $400,000. Now, I don't think it's going to be $400,000. But again, we don't have any money. No, I right? understand. Like, the, this comes out of my personal pocket, everything we're doing. Yeah. And so um, I find all of it a lot to do. But I also, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm not saying you're not using common sense, but I'm looking at, I'm standing here. And quite possibly, a Awanas is going on <laughs> in the buildings I want to occupy. And it's legal. Yeah. And I'm like, what's illegal about me, what I want to do, but I actually have to upgrade? Um, that's all. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, we're a little off of um, our beaten program here, our, our typical program. I, I want to um, go to Commissioner um, Wilkerson has a question. Yeah. And um, then we're going to try to, to get back into uh, our, um, our regularly. Sure, thank agenda. you. I actually have a question for staff. Um, this requirement, would be, is this because of state law? That's correct. These conditions of approval are coming from our fire marshal, uh, and they're required to comply with California Fire Code. Um, so that's where they're coming from. Um, the flexibility lies with the fire department on whether or not these conditions are applicable. These were the conditions that we receive from that department after conducting a review of this proposal. Obviously, um, <clears throat> our, um, sorry. Have, sure have you been in contact with the fire department? No, I have not. I was waiting until we see what's done with here. Um, I, I do happen to have, a, I know of a person uh, who's the captain there, <clears throat> but I have not contacted. I don't actually want to use my friendship with him to see how this thing runs a little bit. I was going to wait till we're done here and then I'll, then I'll run from there. And we're, we're final. Um, this, does this go to the council after this or do we? Um... Whatever action happens tonight is the final decision for the project. Uh, ultimately, the conditions that are being proposed are to ensure compliance with the California Fire Code. Um, the commission, uh, they, I'm not quite confident that the commission has the authority to override conditions that are required by the California Fire Code by the Fire Marshal. Certainly, um, the applicant has the ability to discuss these conditions in more greater detail that can maybe the Fire Marshal can clarify exactly what was meant by these conditions. I, I would propose that okay. as opposed to us maybe making a final decision now to where let's have communication with the fire department, right? Let's, let's do, do that and let staff direct you on who to contact. Maybe if you don't want to use your friend, I probably wouldn't do it either. But let staff direct you if they already have it. If they already have, then I would say, you know, we have to go out of staff direction and we can't turn over state law. I mean, that's just... No, know. I understand. I, that's the reason I asked. I understand There's the a waiver ask. authority. That's I the reason I was asked. Um, but 
I would say, is there uh, has there been an option for the fire department and the applicant to, to have a conversation? I believe we've we've forwarded the contact information of the fire department representative who prepared these to the applicant. But as the applicant indicated, they haven't had a chance to talk with that fire marshal yet. Um, certainly, the commission might propose that whatever action is made tonight, that the fire marshal has the flexibility to review these conditions with the applicant and um, make a final determination whether or not one of these should be removed or added. Okay, so what I'm gonna propose is um, so we can keep our, um, our meeting moving. I'm gonna to go to Commissioner Vargas and then I'm gonna ask um, our, um, our city attorney and um, city man, or uh, our, um, uh, Ms. Morris, to uh, provide um, guidance on um, the request. So, um, Commissioner Vargas. Yeah, Mr. Paul, I had a question. You do yes. share grounds with Orchard Baptist Church, correct? Is it on the same? It's their facility. Their that facility, exists. correct. Yeah. Talk, is Pastor Doan, is he? Pastor Doan. Have you had any communication? Because I think he runs a child care, daycare. Yeah, there's a, and that's the, the other thing. There's a, there's a preschool there that's been have there. You, have you talked to him about requirements that he had to be? Is there any guidance you can get from him? No, uh, I haven't talked to him specifically about that. But when I did look into this, because I, I was wondering why uh, the preschools, as I understand it, have different rules to follow. It right? Because be, it's no. the same, like, they're right here and we're where Mr. Klein's at. It's the same fire system. It's the same buildings. It's the same everything. And they have all these little kids and teachers running around. And I, I just, I, I'm baffled why why we would have to put in a the, the things the fire department wants us to put in. And I, I just understood that this was the permit that was coming to you guys to be approved and that I was gonna have to do it. And so I thought, well, I'll take the opportunity to ask if it can be waived. Uh, that's that, because the fire department looked at the facilities and said, these are the things. I had some interaction back and forth via, via paper, via Eileen, she would submit me questions from the fire marshal. I would answer them, give them to her, and she would give them back to him. And, and then this was what came back to me, saying, well, this is what you need. So that's... So you've, you've had no direct communication? Had no direct communication with them, no. Thank you. Director, Director Morris. I'd like to clarify for the commission that um, existing facilities that are established lawfully do not need to comply with current fire code requirements. Over the years, in particular due to the concern about the safety of children that are occupying a shared space, the requirements have gotten more stringent. Um, our fire marshal, Jill Childers, um, in her conditioning, I can't imagine she's somehow going overboard. I believe she's complying. She's articulating the minimum needed to convert this space from what it is now to what it wants to be. I, the commission does not have the authority to waive um, the California Fire Code. Um, I would say the commission has a couple options this evening, and it probably depends a little bit on what the applicant wants to do. Approve the permit as recommended by staff and understand that the applicant, of course, can follow up with Fire Marshal Jill Childers and have the conversation about what the requirements are, are there any alternative ways of compliance, et cetera, or the commission could continue this item to a date uncertain and allow the applicant to follow up with the fire marshal and then we'll schedule it back here in the early part of the new year. It, it sounds like she has waiver authority and that she can, according um, to what, what sir, you um, please, our uh, vice chair would like I'm to. Sorry. Director Morris, if, if this commission approves with the, these conditions and the fire marshal or comes back with lesser requirements, does our motion? It isn't, you're, you're, the approval, these permits our approved. Approval goes through regardless. And really through the building permit process that's subsequent to this that will involve the preparation of plans and all the details, um, the fire marshal does have the authority. I, I'm not saying she will because her job is compliance with the fire code, right. but she does have the authority and the ability to sit down with this gentleman, go through what the requirements <coughs> are, and see if there are any flexibilities. But it won't impact if we. It wouldn't impact the use permit. Perfect. Okay. Terrific. So and does that make sense yeah, to that, you? And um, she has the authority to look, sit down with me and she might go, okay, well, you don't need this. That's okay if you've approved it tonight. It well, go to, through. To, to be clear, we're not making any representations or guarantees. She's going to say no. words like, well, you don't need this. I mean, no, I understand. She may never say that. I understand. Okay. Yep. Okay. Completely understand. But sure. if you approved it now, I could sit with her and she could say, yeah, you really don't need this. And it would still be okay with you, gentlemen. She may you say that. She may not. I understand. Okay. I understand. Okay. I just, okay. That I don't need to come back again yeah. and have you approve what she's Mr. scaled Chair. down that's right okay but it's your you know we we, we could 
as as director morris said we, we, we could provide the flexibility to the two of you to work um through that or we could postpone this indefinitely no i'll work we don't with know her i have no problems here. working with her okay sounds great okay that's a that sounds very fair okay so, Point of clarification for the commission. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware as we go through projects that are brought to the commission, it is common for applicants who are just looking for clarification after the matter and action is taken to talk with the fire marshal, talk with other departments and minor adjustments or, or changes as long as there is a consistency with whatever those conditions are. So that flexibility has already always been there. Um, it's usually exercised after the matter. Gotcha. I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wilkerson. He, he answered my question. So um, thank you. I I would personally lean towards the second option of what Director Morris gave us, just in terms of, you know, we, we grant and then you have a conversation later. I like the fact that go have the conversation, yeah. right? Reach out. Um, come coming to us and saying, hey, hey, you know, I want this, but we didn't have the conversation first. Sometimes I'm like, mm, there's a step you could take. Right. right, yeah, this is my ignorance of the process. Right, and, and, and that's no fault to anyone. I mean, I mean, that's just kind of how we go. How quickly could the process come back? Um, so, you know, it's not 12 months from now. That's half time. Uh, the commission would likely see uh, this item back in February. Oh, oh, okay, so to clarify that that's if, if we didn't approve it tonight, how quickly would it come back after some deliberation? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry if I missed that. Um, okay. Um, so I, I'm going to th thank you. Mm -hmm. thank and, um, you know, public comment is still open. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to thank the applicant for his comments. I'm going to invite other members of the, of, of the public, uh, of, of the public, if they would like to make comments. Um, thank you. Definitely. Thank you, sir. With that, we're going to go ahead and close public comment. I don't see anyone else lining up. Um, we're going to move to um, what um, really? Um, oh, okay, we're going to so we're going to move to um, uh, John's question and um, pick from there, Commissioner Wilkerson. I, I again, I, I think all questions were asked. I actually would like to make a simple motion of the recommended recommended action by simple motion approve the category exemption and conditional use permit for the. Continuing on Christian Classic School at 301 North Orchard Avenue, subject to conditions of approval. Uh, we have a, a motion from Commissioner Wilkerson. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded by Commissioner Rudin. Um, will um, Clerk Tillerson please call the roll call vote? Is anyone? Is there anyone? Oh, excuse me. Um, I, yeah, other discussion. Um, one more time around the commission. Commissioner Wilkerson? Okay. Um, with that, um, I will ask uh, Nancy, please call the roll call vote. Commissioner Farkas. Yes. Commissioner Lightfoot. Yes. Commissioner Labonte. Yes. Commissioner Rudine. Commissioner Wilkerson. Yes. Vice Chair Portney. Yes. Chair Klein. Yes. Uh, the item passes unanimously. Chair, I would ask uh, if you could give us a moment to fix the screen presenter. It seems to have malfunctioned <laughs> before starting the next item. I appreciate you pointing that out, Albert. I was looking down. Um, so this is where there's a, 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 a dance song routine, no? <laughs> dance I would have, but Mr. The Chair. Things, the, the, we're, looks like we're back up again. Chair. If we want to proceed with item eight, the business item, it doesn't require um, slides. So we could proceed with that if the commission would like that. Okay. We'll proceed with item eight. Need it for later. Um, We have come to the business portion of the agenda, and we have one item for business, which is to approve the 2023 Planning Commission meeting calendar. Uh, may we please have a quick staff presentation on this item? Uh, thank you, Chair Klein and Commissioners. Uh, you have in your packet the proposed meeting calendar for 2023. 
Uh, we'd like you to approve it this evening, but we also want you to know that the council calendar for 23 is not totally fully settled. So be forewarned, we might bring this back to the commission um, at another public meeting to make any adjustments that are needed. But for now, we would like to get the new year going with these proposed dates for meetings. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you, Director Morse. Uh, Mr. Wilkerson, we have a, a motion? I, I have a question. Okay. Um, how, how set are we in these meeting dates? <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just going to be March 20th. <clears throat> Ooh, sound like Greg. Um, March 21st is my wife's birthday. And I would prefer her not to blow out the candles with all of us. Um, um. <laughs> just, I'm just throwing it out there. Just, honey, I hope you're watching. But like, I'm asked. Okay. I, <laughs> thank, thank you, Commissioner Wilkerson. These these dates are these dates are on a rhythm. Let the record uh, reflect. Eight oh three at December sixth. Commissioner Wilkerson did what he could. <laughs> <laughs> He did what, he, but but hey, what, no matter what the answer is, he did what he could. I, I would I would like to respond to Commissioner Wilkerson that these are the dates that do not usually conflict with council meeting dates. So you'll have to make your own decisions. I know I attended a council meeting on my on both my husband's birthday and also a planning commission meeting on another birthday. So it just it does happen sometimes, Commissioner Wilkerson. But these dates are staged specifically to avoid conflicting with council. You could do like now, now you know. You could get your Zoom request in and no one will, will interfere with that. <laughs> so, so hey, no one, so Wilkerson has first dibs on March, on the March meeting, to because we can only have so many people out for a meeting, right? I did not to make like Commissioner Wilkerson. No, I, 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 again, just try to get video on the one that, 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 your wife's birthday. And, you know, just wanted to publicly acknowledge, honey, I asked and, you know, I got shot down. Oh. I looked at it and I thought it's Mrs. Wilkerson's birthday as well. You're right. I, you weren't the only one. You make up for you the only one. I said this is Mrs. Which Wilkerson. is also on the calendar. Which is also on the in June. So it's I'm her birthday. hanging out with you guys for all of my uh, big important dates in my family. Well, I think I, I got a kid's birthday in here too. Are you serious? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> once we make the changes. Is there any way the council can move its meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Wilkerson, would you like to make the motion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wise choice, my friend. Very smart. Uh, can we have a motion, please? Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'm going to be in the doghouse with her. Vice Chair <laughs> for me is not coming to Mrs. Wilkerson's birthday. Uh, is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner Vargas. Uh, <laughs> I'm not involved in this. Roll call vote, please. Uh, will, will, the, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Vargas. Yes. Commissioner Lightfoot. Yes. Commissioner Labonte. Yes. Commissioner Rudine. Yes. Commissioner Wilkerson. <coughs> no. <laughs> Vice Chair Fortney. Yes. Chair Klein. With apologies, and this is we will all we will adjourn. We will uh, going to adjourn in her honor that night. If I have anything to do with it, um, the item passes uh, um, seven to one. Six, six, six to one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we'll, we're now um, next. We have our director's report. Uh, Director Morris, please proceed. Thank you. Um, after the director's report, we will have a community development activity report. So um, I'm going to make the director's report as brief as possible. Um, council action since we were last here as a commission on November 15th, the council approved the triennial building and fire code updates and they'll receive a second reading at the next council meeting. The council approved the Northeast growth area zoning map and text amendments that too will get a second reading at the final meeting of the year. Uh, the green tree project with all of its parts was approved um, with the development agreement that the commission saw versus an alternative version that was created afterward. Um, so that project goes for its second reading at the last meeting of the year. And then the council uh, denied the Southtown Apartments project with a vote of 7-0. Uh, so more to come on that project. Um, tentative schedule of future planning commission items. In the near future, the commission will be reviewing the Vanden Cove project with a public hearing and um, it'll be here for its a housing project in the new year. 
We'll be bringing the annual report on the general plan progress, as well as a recap of the eight years of this current housing cycle and the housing that's been produced and try to bring that alive, alive for the commission and the public. And then lastly, we do intend in the first part of the new year to bring the urban reserve land inventory and development forecast to this commission for your comments and the public review process prior to taking it to council. So it's gonna be a good first part of the new year. At this point, um, item C of my planned activities involves the community development activity report. And I'm looking at senior planner Enalt hoping that our tech is working and there's assistant director Josh Montmayer. Um, and he'll be um, tag teaming the presentation with other members of my staff. Thank you. Thank you, Director Morris. Good evening, Chair Klein and members of the commission. I'm here to give you an activity recap of 2022 to show you how busy we've been in community development, for lack of a better word. We've been very productive. So just to kick it off, we just want to acknowledge that we are now 100% fully staffed. Director Morris, as you guys know, hired me earlier this year, <laughs> your assistant director, and a chief building official, Alaris Dunn. In addition to that, we also hired a management analyst to support our admin team, as well as a permit technician for the building division. So <clears throat> again, we're 100% fully staffed. This is 18 full-time employees in community development. Kicking it off with the building activity report within our building division, the data on the screen is from January to November 22nd of this year. Side by side, I've given you an annual total and monthly average to show that we've been having a very productive year in the building division with over 4,400 building permits being issued. That's an average of about 405 building permits uh, every month. And to break it down even more, that's 100 every week. So to say the least, um, of those building permits we've, um, on average issued about at least 20 single family dwelling units a month and at least one ADU a month. So to date, it appears we have zero multifamily permits. However, it's anticipated soon that we'll receive permit applications for the Peabody apartments, which would um, add 120 units to Vacaville and the Nut Tree apartments, which would add 216 units. So crossing your fingers, maybe that'll come in by the end of the month, but otherwise, hopefully the early part of the next year. Here's a bar graph to show the number of permit activities month over month. And you can see here how it peaked in June and the activity begins to trend down at the end of the year going to the fall and winter months. I would say that this is pretty consistent with construction activity in Vacaville. And here again is the line um, chart, but also provided with some bar graphs showing the correlation between building permits um, and the number of single family dwelling permits that have been issued and finaled. The orange bar graph represents the number of single family dwelling permits issued and the gray bar represents the number of single family dwelling permits that have been finaled. There's somewhat of a correlation that uh, when more building permits are issued overall, the number of single family dwelling permits also increases. So the number of building permits finaled goes up, um, up while and down over month over month. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Can I ask a quick question while you're on this topic? The difference between issued versus final, in case the public doesn't understand what that means? Sure, Chair Klein. Uh, permits issued means permits that uh, applied for a building permit and then were issued for construction. A permit that's final is when where inspectors have gone out and final that construction so it's ready for occupancy. Here I have a comparison line graph showing the total inspections completed each month, the top orange line, and the to total number of building permits issued, um, which is the bottom line. The line graph accounts for all types of inspections and all types of building permits issued this year. And there's somewhat of a correlation between the two lines, where there's a higher month of, when there's a higher month of building permit activity, there's also a higher number of inspections performed. Overall, the number of inspections performed in 2002 came out to approximately 13,800. Uh, with a monthly average of about 1,200 inspections between our three building inspectors. Um, that's about 400, 400 inspections a month per inspector. And we issued at least 4,400 building permits. And that's a monthly average of about 400. So busy, busy. <laughs> On average, how many inspections does that require a week between those three people? A week? That's at least 20. Look, I'll break it down to you by day. That's at least 20 inspe inspections per day. Per, okay. I didn't know yeah. if you know that debt set off. That's amazing. Simple math. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's why I went to law school, so I didn't have to do math. Okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over now to Senior Planner and Nolte for the current planning uh, overview. Uh, current planning activity, just shining a light on our activity for the past year, we processed 42 discretionary actions, which with the help of the Planning Commission, also City Council for those final actions. Highlights on some of those involved 700 Park on Main, Allison Apartments, Oak Grove Apartments, and as well as Hampton Inn and Suites. 
During that same time, we process 750 plan checks. So those permits that are requested with the building division, we also review those plans to make sure that whatever those permits are, they're being consistent with the original entitlements or our uh, land use and development code. So during that process, we looked at uh, 750 plan checks. Some notable ones from that uh, list include the Midway Commerce Center, which is currently under construction now, the Vaca Valley Logistics Center, and various house plans for uh, developments over off of Vanden and the Roberts Ranch uh, developments. Uh, during that time, we process, we went out into the field and performed 461 final planning inspections. Uh, most notably, uh, aviator and warehouse projects, uh, as well as AD LDK warehouse projects, we looked at and went out in the field and saw those gigantic concrete building uh, buildings being tilted up and making sure that everything complied with those original plans. But also, we looked at 374 single-family homes and various subdivisions being built throughout the year. We're inspecting every single one of those to make sure we're getting the right house colors, we're getting the right trim, and the right ornamental details around the houses, as well as trees and landscaping uh, throughout each of those properties. So everyone gets a softball tonight. Um, what's the, the discretionary action projects versus a plan check? Um, can you just tell us what these categories, like what happens when, when you for, for breach it? Sure. Uh, the commission acted on three discretionary actions tonight. Uh, those were a design review and two conditional use permits. So discretionary action means uh, something that's not ministerial, that requires uh, a judgment in comparison to land use development code, and um, that can either be done by the director of community, community development, the planning commission, uh, or city council. A ministerial plan, a ministerial approval would be an example of somebody who wanted a home-based business uh, or who wanted a business license to start a business in a commercial center or a true mold permit. Uh, plan checks are the thing that occurs after uh, an entitlement or a discretionary action has taken place, and that's usually that review with more detailed information on plans to make sure that they're complying with all the approvals that were uh, um, enacted by whatever that uh, deciding body was, whether this uh, director, planning commissioner, or city council. So uh, it's kind of a check and balance uh, approach to make sure that staff is getting everything. And then you have that final uh, inspection that occurs after the matter and make sure, okay, whatever was built out in the field complies with those building permit plans that we inspected, which complies with that land use entitlement that there was a discretionary action. So it's that three-step approach to make sure that we're getting everything that we're... And so approved. all of that's under current planning versus advanced <clears throat> it has a different set of, 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 of indicators. Correct, yes. And then okay. later on in the presentation, you'll, see, you'll, hear, you'll hear a little bit about the advanced planning approach. <clears throat> so of course, we've got some graphics for the commission. <laughs> Uh, the Harbors and Townhomes is something that has been going on this year. And so on the left side of your screen, we'll show you what it looked like beforehand when that project was going before the Planning Commission and then eventually appealed to City Council, but it got its approval. And so the project on the right-hand side is what it looks like as it's under construction, very far along in the process. You can see um, the vibrant fall colors in the background, but um, a nice multifamily project. How did you guys get the full-grown trees in the after <laughs> versus, like, there are no trees in the before, and now, like, I see there's a full-on, like, array of landscaped trees. Well, the picture on the left is taken during uh, the winter months when all the deciduous okay. trees have lost their leaves, and on the right-hand side is during the fall colors. So the note itself, if you're doing a before and after, do, it, do the after in the spring is what you're saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're beautiful pictures, guys. Uh, another example of a project that's currently under construction, Peabody Road Apartments. On the left-hand side, you'll see uh, there was a former uh, auto dealership in the building, and then on the back side, a lot storage for, I think it was pottery. And so all of that has been raised, removed, and they are currently grading that site, leveling it off for those Peabody Road Apartments. That is 120 units that became before the Planning Commission for Discretionary Action. Pony Express is a project that uh, I think it was approved in 2019, and it's uh, been a long haul, but the most notable component about this is this is affordable housing for seniors. It's restricted. Uh, and so on the left-hand side, again, a picture that shows what it looked like at the time when the applicant was proposing to construct it. And on the right-hand side, you'll see that some of those large oak trees within the site were preserved, and they're doing a great job on trying to keep those things alive as they're constructing those buildings at the site. Uh, I noted that we uh, inspected 374 uh, single-family homes. Those are occurring over in the Roberts Ranch subdivision, which you'll see left on side, left hand side of the screen, occurred that initial grading throughout the entire development. Now, Roberts Ranch 
believed was originally approved in, I think, 20, uh, 2017 or 2018. Uh, so it's been a long project. They originally submitted in 2015 for an application, a required environmental impact report, a large specific plan. And so you're finally seeing the fruits of the labor that occurred through that development review process with the construction of uh, the pictures on the right. You'll see the main parallel way uh, cutting through the middle of that picture, and that will go all the way up to uh, Bright Landing, and then eventually will cross Elmira Road over into the Farm at Elmo Creek. And that's that uh, secondary minor arterial street that will provide access uh, and funnel people to Fry Road, which you'll see on the bottom of the screen, as well as Elmira Road to the north. Um, and this one is another area that you'll see grading activity occurring right now and construction occurring. You'll see uh, a long Leisure Town Road, a nice, beautiful masonry wall that is enclosing the subdivision called Villages at Vannon. Um, that you'll see mainly being built by Meritage Homes. And on the left-hand side of the screen shows what it looked like some time ago. And then they are moving very quickly with building those houses out there on the right-hand side of the screen. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Albert. That was great. Um, so just briefly going over some of the items for advanced planning that we accomplished in 2022, the downtown specific plan, which Mish was very involved in um, for, uh, for several years. Uh, that was approved by city council in February. Uh, the housing element, uh, we've sent our draft uh, element to HCD for their review. We're expecting comments back in July, I'm sorry, in January. Uh, the safety element, environmental justice, goals, policies, and actions, that is also something that we uh, work mission on. Uh, we are expecting the public review draft in January, I believe. Um, citywide cultural sensitivity protocols. Um, so this is something that we're working with the Yoshidehi uh, tribe on. Um, really a couple of goals that we have is to uh, try to streamline uh, projects and how uh, we uh, sort of deal with cultural resources uh, during construction or areas of high sensitivity in the downtown area. So we worked on um, some protocols on how to deal with that. And we've been working with, uh, we've had a couple meetings with Yosha Day. Uh, so far, we're expecting another meeting uh, in January, and it's been uh, pretty good so far. I think they appreciate um, sort of the, the outreach the city's doing instead of just waiting for something to happen. So uh, that's been going well. Uh, again, I mentioned um, we shared the draft protocols with them, and we're expecting another meeting in January. Uh, Landing Development Code update and map updates. Um, so this is really um, partially related to the housing element and anything that the state law is requiring us to include in our code, our housing element, that's not in our code. Um, some cleanup items, some definitions, some procedures that we need to put into our uh, land use bill code. And, and with that, we'll probably have some cleanup items too from when the code was adopted. I haven't had a chance to go through it. There's <laughs> might be some things that are missing or things that we need to clarify for, uh, for our residents and our code. So those are the main uh, advanced planning items that we um, accomplished in 2022. Thank you. Excellent. Busy. And that concludes our 2022 activity recap. Does the commission have any questions for us? Thank you. <laughs> Good job, team. Oh, Commissioner Wilkerson. Just nice seeing all the new faces in the room. And so, you know, uh, you guys, I believe, two new presentations today. You guys did a fantastic job. Um, Josh, I think this is your third or fourth time being here, but like, it's just nice seeing full staff, and congratulations. Um, and th that's all I got. Wait, follow up on that. Oh, hang on. Did yeah. you happen to see Albert during Eileen? That was presentation. Oh, it was like a, it was like a proud parent. Yeah, it was proud parent. <laughs> <laughs> you get an opportunity to see it. It, it was a proud. It was a proud parent moment. They they did such a good job. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I can only imagine. Uh, Commissioner Wilkerson? And not leaving out Albert or Paymon or the rest of the other staff who are not here. Everyone does a fantastic job. Um, even our Nancy. big, even our back benchers. Uh, yeah, Mr. Lincoln, we've only heard from once since it started. <laughs> it was a one-time thing, I guess. It's fine. But, you know, we'll get the other 15 members of your staff out here. Or, uh, I, I don't, the math was a little off. <laughs> We have three, six, 12 members of your staff that's not here. Then we could pack this room. Um, okay, the excellent job team. I'm so proud of, I'm, well, I mean, I, I mean, we're all, you know, the proud parent thing. I, I, I just, I know that no one's prouder than um, uh, Director Morris has worked so, so hard since she got here and she's been very patient 
and she's seen the vision. People have 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 acknowledged that, and um, I I think that you know what's happening in Vacaville with everyone working together and Director Morris having the vision and everything with the economic thing that we're doing biotech. It's just it it it's nice to see everyone here, and you guys love Vacaville. You know, everyone. You guys are here every week. You have love for the city, and I see it in the staff. And you guys are not. Um, uh, you guys are planning this community. I hope, like it's your own. It is. You know, our, our kids live here. Your kids live here, and um, it's uh, it's terrific to see people actually coming to these meetings and your staff being full. Aaron, how long can we keep your staff full, please? <laughs> Whatever it takes. We'll streamline these meetings. We'll, we'll go even quicker. Um, so with that, um, we'll streamline the meeting. Um, is there uh, anything else to report, Director Morris? OK, thank you. Um, now it's time for commissioner comments. This portion of the agenda is for commissioners to inform each other of items of potential interest to other commissioners, such as interagency meetings or announcements as appropriate. Um, commissioner Wilkerson, why don't you start us off? I will just Uh, I also wanted to welcome our uh, new planners. So you guys did a great job. Job on your first one. I think it was in a packed house. Um, my comments are, I listened to the Solano EDC webinar that was on November 30th, and it was really interesting. It was about an hour and a half long or so. And uh, there's four different speakers. And it, it, was, it was very interesting kind of on the future of where housing's going. Uh, they discussed uh, on the state level, the Housing Enforcement Department, and just they're serious. They're not messing around anymore. It's not an emphasis on um, just available sites. It's it's actual development, and so they're they're serious. and And it was interesting, uh, just kind of you know where the state's going. Uh, they spoke specifically about Solano County, of course, and uh, you know the impact that Travis Air Force Base has. Um, but then also talking about, you know, the community be able to, being able to age in place, you know, the, the need for senior housing. Um, and then uh, also going on, uh, like with businesses, you know, brick and mortar businesses, uh, mixing housing and, you know, housing and commercial together. Um, and you see that a lot in, you know, with me coming from the South Bay, you see that a lot in more impacted cities where there's commercial down below and then housing up above. and. You know, it kind of benefits a few things. It, it benefits small businesses because you have that immediate, sorry, I'm back to you, but you have that, uh, um, you know, people living upstairs. It's that the walkability, which also helps the city with vehicles, mile travel needs. And, um, but no, it was, it was, it was really interesting. It's kind of where the future of it is going. So if I don't know if they were replaying or not. Okay. I was going to, Oh, perfect. Cool. Um, so I wanted to listen to it again. It, it is definitely worth a listen. I mean, not only to us as commissioners, but to general public of wanting to know why, why is housing the way it is? You know, why is, why is the city doing this? And so, well, the city's doing this because the state, state says this. So that was interesting. Check it out. Amanda, can you tell us a little thing about like the age in place thing? I, I, I think that's a, a Sounds interesting. I mean, what yeah, does that mean? it was. It was. We're not. We. I don't think just Solano County, but just kind of across the board. The the lack of senior housing and um, not just the affordability of it, but you know, at a certain age, you don't want to go upstairs anymore. So, which means you need to have single family, and with such a premium on land size, is it feasible anymore to not build up? And, um, it, you know, so they were just kind of addressing that, you know, addressing, addressing the need for senior housing. A lot of people, they want to stay here. Um, they, don't, they don't want to retire and go elsewhere. And it uh, could be family, grandkids are here, or it's because it's a great place to live. So, yeah, it's interesting. I hadn't quite thought of that yet. Yeah, a couple it, more years till I retire. You think, you think the housing element, um... You're on the housing element committee. Is that thing that will your committee take that up in the in the new year? Any of the issues that you're encountering? I'll bring them up. Your committee. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No spotlight or anything, but yeah, no. I mean, sorry. It's, <laughs> go with professional spotlight. opinions. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing yeah. with that. 
Any other questions? I don't have an off, but Vice Courtney. No, Merry Christmas to all commissioners and staff. Thank you. You will. Sorry, Brass. Out of my business. Right. Um, well, uh, uh, I want to thank everyone for the year. It's been um, a lot of hard work. Um, Mr. Wilkerson, um, I would now like to welcome him for holiday. Oh, blue. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, th thank you everyone for the hard work this year. And um, as uh, uh, Commissioner um, Courtney has, Vice Chair Courtney has said, um, Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, happy holidays. Um, go Vacaville. Go Blue. Fingers up. Or adjourn. Maybe.